Hey, Rick. Hi, Rick. Hi, uh, appreciate both of you doing this. Oh, appreciate you being you here. You know, um, Dean, let, I guess let me start with you. Just from the production side and the producer side, how difficult of a, of a sell was this? Because this is not a type of show that, you know, basic TV is doing anymore. Well, that's right. You know, I think that there, there's a, a, a very strong trend now for shows to be very, very dark and very, very edgy. And uh, uh, this is a show that really has a lot of optimism to it. You know, that, that uh, um, this is a show really about the triumph of the human spirit. And, uh, uh, you know, we want to put these characters in this pressure cooker where every decision is life and death and to see who can rise and who will fall. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that uh, um, this, this was a, a, a kind of show that's not really being made right now. And that's why Jonathan and I wanted to make it. Well, you know, Jonathan, this uh, you have all this experience with Stargate and this seems like very much drawn out of that type of show. It felt, in a good way, very sort of '90s TV. This sort of nonstop action and a lot going on. It, you know, how conscious of a decision was it to sort of have that almost retro feel to it? Um, I didn't think of it as retro. It's just kind of how I write. <laughs> yeah, I tend to write. I tend to write a little. You know, I I don't. I have a hard time myself watching a show that takes six episodes for it to get going. Which is very common today. I want I want the, my shows going right away, you know, and and the action to kick in right away, and the characters and the fun to kick in right away. Um, that's just how I write things. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I will have to say that watching the first, I guess, four episodes I've seen, uh, it didn't remind me directly of of uh, Stargate. I think Universe, the the, but it was sort of that same approach of putting a bunch of people on a ship and seeing what happens and they have nowhere to go and, and they're forced to deal with each other. Yeah. I didn't work well, on I, Stargate universe. Yeah. So well, I, I knew you did, but it was, yeah, it, it did sort of remind it, which I think is part of the reason I was thinking retro is it has that sort of, like you said, nonstop feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, you you know, also, Dean, the, go the ahead. Roots, sorry. The roots of this are deep. You know, if you, you can go all the way back to Hitchcock's lifeboat, and, you know, it's very similar in that regard in that you, you take a group of diverse characters, you put them in a confined space and uh, uh, they're in a pressure cooker. Every decision they make is going to be life or death. And I think that that gives you a playground to really tell human stories. The question is, which stories are you telling? Um, and I think, you know, what separates us from some of these other shows is the fact that none of these characters were supposed to be in charge. None of these people were supposed to be the, the, the leaders and uh, the fun of the show is seeing, can they rise to the occasion? Well, you know, it is difficult to manage so many moving parts. I mean, <laughs> it's a big ensemble. You're shooting in some challenging places. Uh, even though you have all this experience, was there something that just popped up along the way where you just thought, wow, I, this is not a problem that I anticipated we were going to have? Well, I, I, look, the, the overarching problem is that both Jonathan and I have very big ambitions, uh, <laughs> but we didn't have the giant budgets of some of these other shows or the, the luxury of enormous amounts of time. So the, what you would normally do in these situations is you would, you would write your show down to, to, you know, to the realities of the production. But Jonathan and I don't tend to do that. Uh, and I think because both Jonathan and I are also directors, we were able to kind of reach into our bag of tricks and say, okay, we've got this much money, this much time, and we want to do something really extraordinary. How are we going to do it? And, and we just, we pulled out every trick we ever knew and it was difficult. And, and a, a lot of it was us educating our teams on how to do things that they didn't think was possible to do. Um, and it was risky, but it was also what gave us enormous satisfaction to, to see certain things that we really couldn't afford to do. And we did it anyway. You know, Jonathan, uh, Dean mentioned how the, the sort of the complexities of this and in any show, particularly if you have a, a large ensemble, you, people get cast. You have a, an idea of what character is going to be like and someone's cast and seeing them doing the role, you decide, oh, they ha they can bring this to the character that I hadn't seen or this is their strength. And, and I'm wondering, can you talk a little bit about that process with this show? Because I suspect that happened more than once. <clears throat> that very much happened on this show. I mean, uh one of the, the the scary things about starting up a show is 
you do the casting sessions and the the actors get to do one or two scenes in the audition and they nail those right and you don't know how much coaching they had how much you know work they did on it and so there's always the fear that they'll show up on the set and not be as good as we thought they were right in this case that never happened every one of our cast were amazing and bring things to their characters that we didn't even anticipate i mean there there were i can't tell you how many times i would write a a, a scene and then see the the their uh their interpretation of it and go oh wow i didn't see it that way but that's really cool that's great and that lo that leads us down another path so yeah we I, we really lucked out on this cast this cast is is amazing and they're uh they're bringing a lot to their own characters and then dean um you know this how it, how insular or how uh, micro was it when you were laying out this this season? You talked about things having to change, um, but you know, did you know how that last episode of the season was going to end? Did you know the major and some of the minor points going into it, or was was there a lot of sort of going on the fly depending on how things were going? Well, Jonathan had done this amazing job of laying out on this giant board. Here's the whole season. Here's each character's arc from beginning to end. And so we went in there very confident, there's our show. But as Jonathan said, we would watch dailies and go, oh, what was that look she just gave that guy? There's something going on there. Or what was, what was, what was her, she thinking when she was, when she was talking about her backstory, she, 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 she got all upset. Why was she upset? And so suddenly we'd look at the thing and go, all right, well, let's change this, let's change this, let's change this. So a lot of it was inspired by the real creative work of, of our team, both, both in front of and behind the scenes. You know, sometimes props would show up that looked very different than we thought we'd go, oh, I wonder what happened there. I wonder what that, that's about. And it would affect our writing. I mean, this, this was such a collaborative effort of, of amazing actors, amazing artisans in Serbia. And, and it, it would influence what we wanted to do. Uh, you know, Jonathan, uh, you know, along those lines, uh, what was sort of the, the, one of the biggest surprises for you of, of, of how this played out as you were making changes? What, what, uh, particularly with a plot point, was there something where you just, it wasn't something you thought of ahead of time where you'd considered, but you realized, hey, this makes a lot of sense given what's going on. Um, I can't, there, there aren't any real specifics. I, I'll, I'll tell you, there were a few actors uh, who were intended to be much smaller parts than they ended up being. And we started to see what they could do and started giving them more and more to do. That, that took us down other paths that we wouldn't have gone down because we weren't planning on doing anything with that character. Um, things like that. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, let me just follow up with that question. And I think I need to wrap up here. Um, you're, you're without giving away too much, uh, several characters get killed off pretty early, which is, even though, you know, you, it's not something you've, you've lived with for six episodes, they're characters that have been fleshed out and, you know, that has to be a little scary from a producer standpoint and from people at the network or the studio looking at it and going, I don't know, you know, are you going to be killing people off every episode? We can't have that. Although that does give it that that heightened anxiety for everybody. Well, I think that one of the issues in watching television today is that we've all watched so much television. You know, we've all seen thousands of hours of television in our lifetime. And I think by one of the advantages of not having giant name actors in our show is not really knowing who's going to stay the whole time, who, who lives or dies, who survives, who's going to turn into a bad guy or a good guy. And that really, I think, makes the show more compelling because right from the first episode, one of the most interesting characters doesn't make it to the end. You know, so it, it, it's a thing of not knowing where the script is going to go, where the stories are going to go. And hopefully that makes it makes it very compelling to watch. And, and we did it. Sci-fi has been very supportive of that. They, they, you know, you're right. A lot of networks will say, you can't kill that character. We love that character. Sci-fi has been, you know, great, uh, great partners in this thing. And they've said, uh, you know, go for it. That's cool. <laughs> well, that, that's it. And along those lines, I just wanted to mention that, you know, one moment like that, that I was at was a nice mm -hmm. surprise was there's a, there's a scene where they're trying to get the shuttle working and he kicks it. <laughs> and it starts up and like, oh man, no, but, and it dies after five seconds. I was, I was so, honestly was so happy to see that, that, that trope didn't play through. So I really appreciate it. 
uh, uh, you know, I really enjoyed what I've seen of the show, and, and congratulations with it. And uh, it's it's nice to see a show like this again. Thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Thanks. Thank Bye. you, Rick. Bye.